Hey everyone, today's video is part 3 of what if Anakin went to Mandalore. I've enjoyed taking a look at what the events of Revenge of the Sith might have looked like if Anakin accompanied Ahsoka to Mandalore rather than going with Obi-Wan to rescue the Chancellor. Now I know that I said part 3 would be the final part, but I quickly realized that in part 2 I set up a lot of pieces to wrap up. So in order to tie all of those loose ends well, I will be concluding this whole story in part 4 tomorrow. The Jedi team of Obi-Wan Kenobi, Mace Windu, Kit Fisto, and Saizy Tin approached the Senate building. The entrance was crawling with clone troopers of the Coruscant Guard. Their comms had been going off consistently over the last hour. Clones were inexplicably turning on their Jedi generals across the galaxy. They had already lost Ayla Sakura, Plo Koon, and Kyari Mundi, just to name a few. Meanwhile, Anakin commanded his now free 501st Command crew to land their cruiser near the Senate building. To him, it seemed safer to blend in with the other Republic cruisers by the Senate building rather than going to the Jedi Temple. The 501st led by Anakin made their way to the entrance of the Senate building. There was clearly something going on here. Anakin made contact with Obi-Wan, who tells him where they are hiding. Anakin, Ahsoka, and Rex break off from the 501st to meet up with the four Jedi Masters. Obi-Wan tells Anakin what is happening around the galaxy. Enraged, Anakin suggests that the 501st engage the Coruscant Guard while the Jedi move to capture Palpatine. Capturing Palpatine would have to bring an end to this disaster. Ahsoka and Rex would lead the attack on the Coruscant Guard while Mace, Obi-Wan, Anakin, and Saizy Tin move to arrest Palpatine. The battle would enrage quickly. The 501st would move in on the unexpected Coruscant Guard. Despite being outnumbered, the 501st would have the element of surprise. The Coruscant Guard would have no reason to expect the 501st had removed their chips. The battle is fierce, but at the end of the day, it would only be a distraction so that the Jedi could slip in and capture Palpatine. As the Jedi approached Palpatine's office, they were met by several guards clad in red. Despite the apparent skill of the guards, they were no match for the Jedi and at last the door to the Chancellor's office opened up. Master Jedi, I see you're all here sooner than I expected. I hear the mission to capture Maul was a success, but you've yet to extract any information from Dooku about this elusive Sith Lord. No need, an annoyed Anakin said. Maul gave me all the information I need. He said this as he arrogantly charged towards Palpatine. Anakin, no, Obi-Wan said. My boy, so powerful yet so foolish. And with a wave of his hand, Palpatine confirmed his identity as Darth Sidious by tossing Anakin out the door. Anakin lay in the hall unconscious next to the red guards. A quick flick of Palpatine's wrist resulted in a lightsaber in hand. Igniting his crimson saber, Palpatine leapt for the three Jedi Masters and immediately Saizy Tin was stabbed through the heart. Seeing this as an opportunity to strike, Kenobi stepped towards Palpatine, bringing his lightsaber down on the Sith Lord, only to have it blocked by a second lightsaber that seemed to appear out of nowhere. Capitalizing on Kenobi's moment of shock, Sidious slashes with one saber while the other blocks an attack from Mace Windu. The speed of Palpatine was beyond anything Obi-Wan had faced. Obi-Wan held his ground for a time before feeling the burn of Sidious's lightsaber streak across his back. He collapsed in pain, unable to move. At this moment, Mace made a move on Sidious before he could finish Obi-Wan off. It was a one-on-one -on -one duel at this point. Mace would channel all of his training and his unique fighting style to end this once and for all. Mace and Palpatine's duel would ensue much like it does in Revenge of the Sith. But eventually, Commander Fox and a few of his ARC troopers rushed into the Chancellor's office. They begin to fire at Windu, who is now managing Sidious and Blaster Fire. Before long, he's unable to keep up and is hit by several blaster bolts. Dropping to his knees, Mace knows that he is lost. Palpatine lets out a ruthless laugh as he commands Fox to finish the job. But Mace resolves that he won't go down without a fight. 
He charges Fox, activating his lightsaber, and he decapitates the commander, only to be met by a barrage of fire from the ARC troopers. Sidious laughs as Mace drops to the floor, dead. Meanwhile on the ground, the Coruscant Guard has recovered from the surprise attack of the 501st and begins to tighten the defenses around the Senate building. They only have to protect the Chancellor. After several minutes pass, dropships begin flying over the battlefield, and the 212th, led by Commander Cody, join the Coruscant Guard. Rex and Ahsoka would continue to push the attack, but their forces were quickly getting overrun. Eventually, Rex would pick up on Commander Cody's strategies as they had written most of them together. This would give the 501st enough of an edge to regroup and make a final push. Back in the Chancellor's office, Darth Sidious stood over Anakin Skywalker as he came to. Rise, my friend. Sidious had spent years manipulating Skywalker. The circumstances were rushed, but he was convinced that he could turn Anakin Skywalker to the dark side. I hope you enjoyed today's video. I'm looking forward to concluding the story in tomorrow's video. Be sure to comment below and let me know what you think. I'm really enjoying these fan fictions and would love to keep improving them for you guys, so your feedback is so helpful. Have a great day.